Hello, thanks for watching another quick tip video from Go Engineer. I'm Bruce Schaller, and this video is on virtual parts. First off, why would you need to use a virtual part? If you look at this round O ring, this round O ring actually fits into a rectangular part. But when I go look at this part, or when I pull it off the internet, it's going to be a round O ring. If I was to go look at a drawing that I had made for this part, it's going to be representative of how I purchased the part. It's going to be a round O-ring as well. So if I want to come in and use this round O-ring in an application that's elliptical or rectangular, I can do that by the virtue of virtual parts. So if I came into this assembly and wanted to make this into a virtual part, I can go ahead and right click on the part that I want to make virtual and here's a make virtual command. So I click on that and it'll ask me if I want to break the link to the external file. That means that I can change this one around and it won't change the original in there. Only in this assembly. You can tell it's a virtual part because of a couple reasons. A, it says virtual part here right now, but also it takes the syntax of the brackets automatically in here. So I could go in and rename this part if I wanted to rather than copy of I might call it round o-ring or something but it's still a virtual part so it being a virtual part allows me to go ahead and go and edit this part and I could go ahead and take that sweep and actually make it into more of an elliptical sweep so I'll do that. I'll go ahead and edit the sketch of the path of the sweep. And I'm going to go in and actually create a path that's right in the center of my rectangular groove. So I will go ahead and use offset to offset that to 3 millimeters, which will put it in the middle of my groove. From there, I can go ahead and use this newer replace command to go ahead and actually replace this older entity with this newer one. That allows the sketch to go ahead and change the profile to use my new path rather than my old path. But what's important here is it is a virtual part. So if I was to look at this, even though I have both parts open in memory, my other part is still going to be round. My drawing that goes with it is still going to be round. So I'm able to maintain this virtual part throughout this assembly now and still have the original stay the way that it was purchased in here. It didn't calculate how much distance I needed. In other words, is the round distance going to be enough to put around this rectangular path. That you still have to engineer. So, but it does turn this into a virtual part. So let's dive a little deeper into the virtual parts and see about some of the settings because A, I could go in and make a virtual part by going in and doing a top-down design and starting a new part from scratch and coming in here telling it where I wanted to make that part. And it is by default a virtual part when I make something top down such as you know this right here I'll go in and just use the edge on that and extrude this information just to go up to show you this is another virtual part I made it top down from scratch and you can see by the brackets it's a virtual part now I particularly don't like the way SolidWorks is set up where it creates virtual parts when you do tops part down. Parts top down, I should say there. And so you really need to know about this one option. And the option is under the assembly, and it's save new components to external files. I would rather have that checked by default. That way, when I go in and make a new part top down, it'll go ahead and write the part to the disk to begin with. So it automatically asks me for that new part name. And I can go ahead and save it and then come in and continue with creating this part. 
this part would not be created top down and yeah, let me get a sketch there and extrude that out this is not a virtual part it's a new part created top down with the option set for making sure that this file gets written out to the disk save new components and external files in the very beginning so without this option checked you are making virtual parts automatically when you create a part top down meaning that I will not see this new part one written to the disk anywhere in my directory only parts that I have that are not virtual get written out to the disk so you can see this is just one application of an o-ring that's originally round that really needs to go into the assembly and fit as a rectangular o-ring and there is a perfect application for creating a virtual part from a part that began that was not virtual. So thanks for watching Go Engineers Quick Tip on Virtual Parts.